All right, and our final presentation of this afternoon is uh, Stefano Mara, who's going to be talking about the applicability of the extent of physical disturbance to benthic habitats indicator to emerging policy and evidence needs. Over to you, Stefano. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Stefano Mara. I work at uh, JNCC. Uh, my work areas in JNCC, the Gen Nature Conservation Committees, are uh, like the development and the application of uh, indicators to assess uh, um, the condition of uh, benthic habitats mainly, but also marine species. Uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I will give you an overview of the methodology of an indicator for physical disturbance and also showing some examples of its applicability. So the extent of physical disturbance to benthic habitats indicator, also known as BH3, is a risk indicator that is aims to assess the spatial extent and distribution of physical disturbance uh, to the seafloor caused by human activities. At the present, the indicator only focuses on uh, mobile bottom contacting fishing and the commerce aggregate extraction uh, pressures. Uh, this indicator was developed under the uh, OSPAR uh, framework, but has also been used for national assessment, including the UK Marine Strategy. And uh, um, the, 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 um, the methodology is applied at the higher habitat resolution possible, um, and, and then summarized at broad scale habitat type. It can also be used to uh, assess disturbance on uh, listed OSPAR threatening and declining habitats. So in this slide, you can see um, the data flow of the indicator. Basically, the indicator uh, relies on two types of underlying information. We need to know the distribution of benthic uh, habitats and benthic species and uh, have information on their sensitivity to specific pressures. The second type of information that we need is uh, information on the pressures itself, so the distribution and their intensity. These two types of underlying information are then combined to produce uh, maps of uh, potential disturbance to the seafloor. And the indicator can produce different type of output that, uh, as mentioned, are spatial output like maps, but also summary statistics. A bit more detail on the input data. So to know uh, the distribution of benthic habitat, we use uh, habitat maps. Um, the composite habitat map is a combination of uh, uh, modeled um, information, but also um, um, evidence uh, information from survey data. Um, when we assess, when apply the indicator to assess a treatment and declining habitat, we use a separate uh, habitat layer that is produced by OSPAR using up-to-date uh, uh, data submitted by OSPAR contracting parties every year. On the top of, uh, um, of this, uh, we also use uh, uh, evidence from uh, survey data. So basically the indicator uses present information on present absence of benthic species from um, offshore surveys uh, record. And these are generally sourced by marine recorder or the one benthic database. Once uh, um, um, we have information on benthic and species habitat distribution, this needs to be linked to their sensitivity to specific pressures. And uh, the sensitivity is uh, mostly um, obtained from the uh, MARISA uh, assessment, which is a um, uh, robust and uh, um, peer-reviewed uh, methodology uh, that provide uh, sensitivity information from a range of pressures and uh, which is uh, uh, developed under, uh, from the Marlin uh, framework by the Marine Biological Association. Um, the sensitivity is uh, considered as a combination of the uh, resistance and the resilience of the receptor. So the resistance is the um, ability to the receptor to withstand an impact event, and the resilience is the time that the receptor requires to recover uh, from an impact event. Um, the, these two types of information are combined using a matrix approach to derive five uh, sensitivity uh, categories uh, with the increasing number reflecting increasing sensitivity to the pressure. The pressure information that uh, uh, the BH3 indicator use are basically um, surface and subsurface abrasion from bottom contacting fishing. These are uh, sourced by ICES pressure layer and that are available as web area ratio at C squared grid resolution. 
Uh, the indicator is also applied to assess disturbance from aggregate extraction. And in this case, uh, pressure information are derived from industry data that are available at uh, different resolution, 50 per 50 meters. And uh, again, uh, data are generally uh, available as a duration and are then converted in swept area ratio estimates. Swept area ratio are for both uh, uh, pressure types are then converted into categorical scores ranging from known to very high as you can see in the table here. Finally, the sensitivity and the pressure uh, scores are combined to define uh, disturbance uh, um, categories. Um, there are 10 disturbance categories ranging from zero to nine with the uh, Iger number reflecting Iger potential disturbance to the pressure. Um, these categories are further grouped into wider uh, disturbance group, uh, including zero, low, moderate, and high disturbance. These groupings uh, should not be considered as threshold because at the moment we do not have threshold for this indicator, but uh, just need to be considered, um, are applied basically to um, improve the, um, the interpretation of the disturbance output. Here you can see some uh, examples of the type of outputs that the indicator can provide. And these uh, are uh, taken from the uh, analysis that we have conducted under the M-Space uh, uh, project uh, for the M-SMMR uh, network. Uh, as you can see, we can produce uh, a disturbance map. You can see an example of a disturbance map from fishing in, on broad scale habitat types and treated in declining habitats. Uh, but then the indicator can also provide summary statistics. So for instance, uh, the percentage of an assessment area under the different disturbance group, or in more detail, um, the percentage of a particular habitat type uh, that goes under certain disturbance groups. Uh, there are no indicators that are perfect. So also this one has uh, some knowledge gap. In particular, uh, the indicator uh, the confidence in the pressure information is uh, uh, lower in coastal areas. Uh, this is because uh, um, BMS data are only available for uh, uh, vessels that are uh, uh, larger than 12 meters. So um, the, the confidence in coastal area where a small vessel operate is lower. Uh, also, for, for instance, uh, when uh, assessing uh, aggregate extraction pressure, we have uh, sometimes uh, lacked or restrictive access to commercially sensitive pressure information. And sometimes we have uh, um, gaps in the information on the sensitivity. Uh, in order of the indicator uh, is uh, under constant developed and the next uh, uh, steps are um, to test the indicator on additional data and uh, refine the pressure state relationship to define pre threshold. Very quickly, I will give some uh, examples of uh, ap applications. So the most obvious is the assessment and reporting. The indicator has been used uh, for uh, um, the assessment of the disturbance uh, at Northeast Atlantic level and will fed in the next uh, OSPAR quality status report 2023. But we also contribute to UK money strategy uh, reporting uh, and those other reporting uh, uh, um, framework at national level. Another type of uh, um, uh, applicability is to support a climate change uh, research and development project like the M-Space. In this figure here, you can see um, a snapshot of the climate change uh, modeling that the Plymouth Marine Lab has developed under one of the work packages of the project, um, which is aimed to identify climate change hotspot and bright spot, so areas that are subject to um, that are going to change or improve because of climate driver under their natural uh, variability. And in the map, uh, you can see that uh, the output of the climate modeling has been overlaid with the disturbance map from BH3. And uh, so the indicator alongside of other indicators are going, is going to, is being used to provide some recommendation for uh, uh, climate smart and many special plan in the uh, report that is under publication. Uh, under development, sorry, uh, for the M-Space project. Finally, very briefly, um, JNCC is uh, um, work collaborating on the MNCA project. So the, uh, in the BH3 uh, indicator is one of the tools that will uh, be uh, tested to uh, define, uh, to assess the condition of assets. 
So very briefly, um, under the MNCA project, uh, there will be uh, the review of uh, uh, asset service matrix in order to produce a universal asset service matrix that is aimed to link the asset, so for instance, a benthic habitat to the ecosystem services that this asset provide. And uh, the idea is that uh, once we have this type of, of linkages defined, the habitat maps uh, that are used by BH3 can be replaced by maps of ecosystem services, and therefore the indicator can be used to uh, define uh, the, um, the condition of the asset. In, um, of the asset. Uh, there, there will be a more detailed presentation on uh, the universal asset service matrix tomorrow, uh, but this is just a, a brief example of applicabilities. And that's it for me. Uh, this is my contact point if you want to hear more about it and uh, touch a network. Don't forget to follow us. <laughs> Brilliant, some great talks. So I hope you've got lots of questions lined up. Could I ask all the speakers to come forward and um, perch on the perching?